Chapter 1 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stand by their beliefs even when others do not understand them. From childhood, Prince Harry showed that he was quite different from his brother William. He deeply sought the normalcy that his mother, Princess Diana, tried to replicate for him on trips to amusement parks and McDonald's. This wholeheartedness allowed him to start a new chapter in royal history when he fell in love with Meghan Markle. Even in the early days of their relationship, it was clear that Meghan awakened his sense of purpose with humanitarian passions. In November 2019, Harry and Meghan moved to the four-acre Mille Fleur estate in Victoria, Canada, where they were to stay for six weeks. At this point, the negative backlash from social media was getting quite bothersome. Barely a week went by without an aspect of their internal affairs or matters of private discussions being twisted and leaked to the press. They felt as though there were very few palace staff members they could trust, and Harry's relationship with his brother William, which had been strained for a while, was only getting worse. The year had been quite busy for them as they had their son, Archie. The September issue of British Vogue, which Meghan Guest edited, had become their fastest-selling issue ever. The capsule clothing collection she created to raise money for the women's unemployment charity, SmartWorks, had been an instant sellout at Marks & Spencer and other retailers. Harry recently launched Travelist, a new global sustainable travel initiative that he hoped would change the tourism industry for good. Harry and Meghan made all their decisions with careful precision. Protecting Archie and maintaining his privacy was a top priority for them, and they reinforced this when they chose not to give their son a royal title. Harry, who learned the disadvantages of growing up in the royal family early on in his life, and Meghan, quickly getting the same lesson, both wanted to ensure their son chose his own destiny rather than being forced into one. I don't need to have that movie moment where we get out of a car and wave to a hundred photographers before going into a building. It should just be about the work happening inside. Let's focus on what really matters. Prince Harry. After almost three years of constant attacks from the British press, they decided that things had to change. Keep reading to find out the truth behind the rumors and how Harry and Meghan created a new life for themselves. Chapter 2 From a young age, Meghan Markle worked hard and refused to give up on her goals. From the time she was a student, juggling school and jobs, through auditions to becoming a successful TV star, Meghan Markle always had a plan. Her success in the competitive world of show business was a product of the confidence, perseverance, and willingness to work harder than her peers. Her mother, Doria Ragland, and her dad, Thomas Markle, split up after two years of marriage, but they remained unified in the child they shared. Meghan Markle was able to get many jobs because she kept pushing even when she didn't succeed at first. Meghan threw herself into even the smallest of roles, and her father often helped out with set designs for her high school plays and went to as many of her presentations as possible. He also played a critical role in Meghan's development as a feminist and, as she calls herself, a female advocate. When Meghan was 11 years old, her class was watching a TV show when a dishwashing liquid commercial aired with the tagline, Women all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans. A boy sitting nearby shouted out, Yeah, that's where women belong, in the kitchen. Thomas encouraged Megan, who was upset over the incident, to write letters of protest over the ad. She sent letters to the most powerful people she could think of, including First Lady Hillary Clinton, Nickelodeon news anchor Linda Ellerby, and the dishwashing soap manufacturer, and they all responded. She received a letter from the White House. Nickelodeon aired an interview with Megan. 
The detergent manufacturer also changed the commercial's tagline to People all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans. Megan's interest in acting turned into a career goal in high school, but her mother advised her to get a college degree. She secured a place at Northwestern University, and during the course of her studies, her father's older brother, Mick, managed to get her an internship at the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires. Megan was driven, always first to raise her hand when the teacher wanted an answer or a volunteer to read out loud. She had stellar grades and attendants, Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durand. In 2006, she became a briefcase model on Deal or No Deal, one of 26 women wearing matching outfits and each holding a case that contained amounts ranging from one cent to one million dollars. She never stopped pushing, and eventually, she got to play the role of the gorgeous and confident paralegal Rachel Zane in Suits, a then-new show for the USA Network. Chapter 3 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were able to bond over their shared interests in humanitarian services. When Meghan arrived in London, it had been five years since she moved to Toronto to star in Suits. After hiring the London-based PR firm Kruger Crown to promote her interests, she started getting paid to turn up at red carpets. Meghan attended events such as the September 2014 Marchesa Voyage for Shop Style collection launch in New York City, or as a speaker, as she was for Toronto's 2015 Dove Self-Esteem Project and the Women in Cable Telecommunications signature luncheon in Chicago that same year. When she signed with Kruger Crown, Megan also linked up with APA, one of the world's largest commercial talent agencies, to develop her career as a lifestyle influencer based on The Tig, the blog she launched in 2014. A few months before she arrived in London, Jonathan Shallot, who had helped carve out television careers for Simon Cowell, Mel B., and other British household names, signed Meghan to his talent agency, Roar. The hope was for Meghan to perhaps host a food-centric TV show. Jonathan's interest in her for a TV show stemmed from The Tig, which was exactly the kind of future Megan hoped would blossom out of her website. Jessica Moroni, Canada's most prominent lifestyle influencer and a very close friend of Megan's, encouraged her to explore many opportunities and made her stay in London more interesting. Jessica and her husband Ben, the eldest son of the former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and the host of the entertainment show E-Talk, were the city's young power couple. Jessica not only encouraged Megan to follow the same path, but also introduced her to an exciting social scene filled with high-profile charity events. Having the right circle can help you make good decisions. One of those nights in London, her friends, Misha Nonu and Marcus Anderson, set her up on a blind date with Prince Harry. Over drinks, they asked each other questions about their work. Harry talked about his charity work, excitedly telling her stories from his extensive trips to Africa. On the other hand, Meghan shared stories of her work, too, and they had a good time. Harry wasted no time in texting Meghan after that first date, and soon they were planning another. Chapter 4 Prince Harry's life never appeared to be easy. Meghan Markle understood this and put her best foot forward. The next evening, Harry and Meghan went for a romantic dinner organized by Marcus, and although she shared much of her London visit on social media, Meghan knew she had to keep her dates with him a secret. Soon, she visited Harry's home, Nottingham Cottage. Just six weeks after their first date in the city, the prince took her on a trip to Botswana. 
Harry fell for Africa following his mother's tragic death in 1997. Over the years, it had quickly become his home away from home. Spending five days of uninterrupted time together gave the new couple a chance to get to know each other and discover that they shared a curiosity about the world and a laid-back nature. I've never felt that safe, that close to someone in such a short amount of time, Meghan Markle. While Harry and Meghan kept a low profile, the prince's presence could not go unnoticed in her neighborhood. It didn't take long for Harry's visits to become an open secret among Seton Village residents. Letting their closest friends in on their secret had been key. Not worried that any of their confidants would expose them, they instead found themselves with many accomplices willing to help them hide. The press made it hard for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle to live a private life, but they did their best to avoid being noticed. On the evening of October 29, 2016, the couple decided to go to a big costume party thrown at Soho House in Toronto with Harry in town. They turned up at the Halloween bash with Harry's cousin, Princess Eugenie, and her long-term boyfriend, Jack Brooksbank. He was in Toronto for work as a brand ambassador for George Clooney and Rand Gerber's tequila brand, Casamingo. At that party, they received a call from one of Harry's aides at Kensington Palace. The Sunday Express was going to run with the story of their relationship, and the tabloid was rumored to have been tipped off by an employee of none other than Eugenie and her father, Prince Andrew. Another outlet, U.S. Weekly, had also confirmed their pairing and knew that they were together in Toronto, but agreed with the palace to hold off reporting the news until Harry had returned home. The palace aides suggested it would be best for Harry to cut his trip short and quietly return to London, but the prince refused. He wanted to be with Meghan if things got difficult. Chapter 5 No matter how Meghan Markle conducted herself, she faced racism from different tabloids. Harry and Meghan had to stay at Jessica and Ben Mulroney's house following the news of their relationship. On the one hand, Meghan was disappointed that their secret was out, but a part of her was relieved. The press did not relent in spreading rumors and backlash even when Meghan did not do anything. Soon enough, Harry put out a statement. His statement accused several sections of the press of Meghan's abuse and harassment, making particular note of some coverage's racial undertones. In the unexpected release, Harry not only officially confirmed his relationship with Meghan, but also made it clear that he was the one behind this bold protest. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry put up a united front all the time. This way, they were able to deal with interference from the press. On November 27, 2016, Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, released his statement to put rumors to rest. Though the purpose of William's follow-up statement was to make it clear that he supported his brother's relationship with Meghan, two weeks later, the press reported on tensions between the princes over Harry's decision to speak out. On the record, however, Kensington Palace quickly debunked any suggestion that the Duke of Cambridge wasn't in full agreement with his brother's actions. Meghan was hurt by the reactions in the press and online. It was Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, future First Lady of Canada, who ultimately advised Meghan to get used to the press's intrusions and to trust Harry and the team. Meghan was interested to hear how Sophie had successfully made the move from an entertainment news correspondent to much-loved First Lady all while skillfully dodging controversy. It took some months before she felt comfortable with the guidance provided by Harry's team. The team trained Meghan and the people most important in her life on how to protect themselves from the increased attention. Having the palace acknowledge her friends and their presence in her life was a relief to Meghan, who at one point wondered if there would be pressure to move away from those in her old life. 
There were conversations about social media conduct and specific advice to Megan's friends who had to learn the do's and don'ts of Twitter and Instagram. And while she still got a little annoyed at the advice sometimes, Megan grew to realize the importance of their support and experience. Chapter 6. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry had to go through a lot of life changes in the course of their relationship. As 2016 came to an end, Meghan changed her phone number for the first time in years, sending out the new number to just a small group of people. It was yet another step toward leaving behind her non-royal life. Harry planned a New Year's trip where they could get away from it all. Inga Solheim, a Norwegian adventure guide Harry had befriended during a charity walk back in 2011, helped them plan this. He arranged for Harry and Meghan to spend a week in a cabin in Tromsø at the very tip of Norway in the Arctic Circle, where there was no chance of being bothered by photographers. There, Harry and Meghan enjoyed seven days of bliss away from the world. The couple returned to London from the Arctic Circle, where Meghan finally met Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge. Despite the fact that Harry was a regular guest in her household, Kate had seemingly not shown much interest in Meghan, but that indifference wasn't necessarily directed toward Meghan. After she married William, she was careful about letting others into her social circle. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry went on many trips to avoid the public eye and bond in a relaxed environment. In April, Meghan ended her lifestyle blog, The Tig, due to intense media scrutiny. She continued to adjust to her new life in small steps, and on August 4, 2017, Harry took her on a trip to Botswana for her 36th birthday. They spoke about their work and the future. On their return, Prince William spoke to Harry about his relationship with Meghan. He told him to take his time and not rush things with her. Harry was offended that his older brother still treated him as if he were immature. For Meghan, she was all in. Nothing could get her to slow down, not even a friend who cautioned her about getting involved with Harry, Omid Scobie, and Carolyn Durand. The possibility of a royal wedding was the top question for the press when Meghan took her place alongside the rest of the Suits cast at the ATX Television Festival in Austin, Texas. There to promote the series' 100th episode, she found herself dodging questions about the possibility of her marrying a prince. With Harry's consent, Meghan invited Sam Kashner, a high-profile Vanity Fair writer, to her Toronto townhouse because she felt ready to give a statement. In the interview, Meghan claimed that Harry was the reason she kept her sanity despite the false news from the media. Chapter 7 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle cared about similar things and were not afraid to show them to the world. The Invictus Games, Harry's international sporting event for wounded, ill, and injured members of the armed services and veterans, set to take place in Toronto in September, became a natural place for their public coming out. The event began when he returned from his first tour of duty in Afghanistan, profoundly affected by what he had seen. A White House meeting with Michelle Obama also inspired his advocacy. It was a daunting task, but Harry was filled with a sense of renewed purpose, having found his calling. In September 2014, Harry hosted the first Invictus Games. In London's Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, the Paralympic-style event brought 400 competitors from 13 nations around the world to compete in 12 different adaptive sports. At the Games, Harry and Meghan made their entrance, fingers intertwined, toward the tennis courts. This move significantly showed the world that they were romantically involved. The fact that I fell in love with Meghan so incredibly quickly was confirmation to me that all of the stars were aligned.
Prince Harry. Although the Queen had already privately given their engagement her blessing, it wasn't formalized until the following year when she signed the Instrument of Consent. The rule that the monarch must approve marriage for the first six in line to the throne has existed since the Royal Marriages Act of 1772. It was ordered by King George III, whose younger brother, the Duke of Cumberland, secretly married Lady Anne Horton, considered to be the disreputable widow of a commoner. Queen Elizabeth II's declaration approving Harry and Meghan's marriage was made at the Privy Council's meeting on March 14, 2018, but was not publicly announced until early May. As Harry explained all of this to Meghan, they also discussed the role she might take on as a future duchess. Meghan quietly began researching British charities and organizations where she would have the most impact. Finally, on November 27, 2017, the news everyone had been waiting for was announced. The father of the groom, the heir to the throne, Prince Charles, directed his office at Clarence House to reveal the happy news. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, is delighted to announce the engagement of Prince Harry to Miss Meghan Markle. Sixteen months after meeting her prince and just over three months after their secret engagement, Meghan was announced as the next royal bride. Chapter 8 Many people were not supportive of Meghan Markle's relationship with Prince Harry, and they were not afraid to show it. Harry insisted his fiancée had a dedicated team to assist her in learning all about his royal life. This team included Amy Pickerel, who would become Meghan's assistant private secretary, and Heather Wong, Harry's deputy private secretary. A former political appointee in the Obama administration, serving as Secretary of Public Affairs at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Ed Lane Fox and Jason Knopf were also in the team. Meghan Markle underwent an intense two-day security course with the SAS, the British Army's most elite regiment. This was to prepare her for any unexpected emergencies. Meghan's romance with Harry had hardly been public a full 24 hours when her half-sister, Samantha, sensed an opportunity. She was Thomas's eldest child from his first marriage. Samantha reached out to the son with her story about how snagging a royal had been the actress's lifelong ambition. She went on to paint Meghan as a manipulative person, carefully plotting each move from TV star to dedicated philanthropist to Harry's girlfriend. She also accused Meghan of keeping her out of the picture because of Samantha's 2008 multiple sclerosis diagnosis, which had left her confined to a wheelchair. Samantha's brother, Thomas Markle Jr., also picked up on his sister's narrative about Meghan. Meghan was saddened when her oldest, lifelong friend, Nanaki Pretty, joined the chorus of critics and those willing to cash in on their relationship. In the Daily Mail, Nanaki not only sold many very personal photos of childhood memories, but also leveled a series of harsh accusations against her. Jeff Rayner, photographer and co-owner of the Coleman Rayner News Agency, staked out Thomas's home for months and made him an offer that seemed mutually beneficial. They would set up a few candid-seeming shots around town that would shift his image from an overweight hermit to a devoted father eagerly preparing for his daughter's big day. Over the course of several calls, Harry and Meghan told Thomas to ignore all press, but with some encouragement from his other daughter, Samantha, who managed to get a cut of the deal in the process, Thomas took up the photographer on his proposition. This was the beginning of yet another series of bad press for Meghan and Harry. Chapter 9. Meghan Markle's father, Thomas Markle, became a source of trouble for her and a source of false information for the press. 
Having cut himself off from AIDS and his daughter, Thomas was feeding the press a seemingly never-ending stream of untrue statements. With only four days left before her wedding day, though, Megan received more devastating news from her father. He claimed that the stress from the press had caused him to have a heart attack. His doctors advised him that he needed surgery the upcoming Thursday. As a result, he would be in no shape to fly across the Atlantic and would not attend the royal wedding. Questions were raised about the validity of Thomas's claims, but Meghan told Kensington Palace staff that no one was to discredit her father. The day of the royal wedding finally came, and it went interrupted with Prince Charles walking Meghan Markle down the aisle. On June 18, 2018, Thomas conducted an explosive interview with Good Morning Britain. He apologized for taking part in the staged photographs before the wedding, even though he was reportedly getting paid $10,000 for the TV interview. In July, he talked to The Sun on a wide range of topics. Thomas had cut himself off from the palace completely and was consulting only with Samantha at this point. Meanwhile, writers began writing editorials about the many ways in which the palace had mismanaged the whole affair with the Markle family. Thomas put the palace and Meghan in a no-win situation. Meghan made one final effort to communicate with her father in the form of a five-page letter. He replied with his four-page letter, in which he suggested a path forward toward reconciliation. The best way they were going to get past everything, he wrote in a reply letter, would be to stage a photo op for the press where himself, Meghan, and Harry are together and happy. She didn't reach out again. Instead, Meghan put up what Thomas Markle described as a wall of silence. In Oxfordshire, Harry and Meghan fell into new routines as a married couple. On October 15, 2018, reporters received news from the couple's communications secretary. The Duke and Duchess were expecting a baby. Chapter 10 Meghan Markle was a different Duchess. She had character and presence that could be felt. Between her pregnancy announcement and flawless engagements on her first major royal tour, the press did not release any negative stories about Meghan, but that ended on November 10, 2018, when Mail on Sunday reported Harry and Meghan's assistant, Melissa Tabati, had reportedly quit after just six months on the job. The paper quoted a senior aide who stated that Melissa, hired by Kensington Palace in March, was a talented person who played a pivotal role in the royal wedding's success and would be missed by everyone in the royal household and alleged that Meghan was a bad boss. One week later, The Mirror followed up with its own story on Melissa's abrupt departure, reporting that Meghan had reduced the assistant to tears on several occasions. According to multiple sources familiar with her sudden departure, despite the glowing press accounts, the couple had grown dissatisfied with Melissa's work and were not disappointed when she left. At their lowest moments, Harry and Meghan appreciated the support of the hashtag Sussex squad, their global fandom who support the couple online. Despite support for the couple, Harry and Meghan continued to fuel controversy. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle understood each other enough to do well in their various roles and settle into their life as a couple. On March 14, 2019, Buckingham Palace announced that William and Harry were going their separate ways by separating their offices. While the creation of separate courts allowed the brothers to pursue their interests, it was also designed to ensure the necessary resources were in place for the brothers' changing responsibilities. In a major show of support by the Queen, Meghan was made Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, a platform for young changemakers across the 54 member states that champions, funds, and connects young leaders. Harry joined her as President. 
In her first engagement as VP, Meghan joined a panel of women, including singer Annie Lennox and the former Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard, for an event to discuss the importance of International Women's Day at King's College, London. In April 2019, Harry and Oprah announced a partnership to produce a mental health series for Apple TV Plus in late 2020 or early 2021. Chapter 11 The birth of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's son, Archie, put their life in a clearer perspective and affirmed their decisions. While Meghan was initially interested in home birth, as she entered her final trimester, she decided to have her baby at the Portland Hospital in London. At 5.26 a.m. on Monday, May 6, 2019, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, seventh in line to the throne and weighing seven pounds, three ounces, was born. Harry and Meghan decided to forego a title for their son because they wanted him to be a private citizen until he was at an age where he could decide which path he would like to take. In being a hands-on dad, Harry was very much like his brother, William, who was involved in every aspect of raising his three children, Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durand. In their first weeks at home as a new family, Harry and Meghan welcomed friends from far and wide. Meghan remained on maternity leave for the summer, making only intermittent appearances at select few important engagements and family events. Trooping the Color, the Queen's official birthday parade, was Meghan's first postpartum engagement on June 8, 2019. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle maintained their quest for private life and allowed no live-in help. After Meghan's 38th birthday on August 4, 2019, the family of three set out from London to the Spanish island of Ibiza, where they stayed at an upscale gated complex. They flew in Elton John's private jet to the singer's house in Nice, France from Ibiza. The singer had invited them to stay for a while. The press began to publish negative stories claiming that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were disregarding the virtue of conservation while flying on private jets. They were also accused of snubbing the Queen because they decided against a trip to visit her in the summer due to Archie's age. Elton John immediately came to the couple's defense, stating that he had paid for the jet trip. Meanwhile, Buckingham Palace had no comment, which only sought to reinforce Harry and Meghan's desire to change their working model. At the core of their issues was their inability to speak for themselves. Instead, they had to rely on the monarchy. For Meghan, this was frustrating, so she was excited about the Instagram account at Sussex Royal that she and Harry had made public earlier that spring. Did you know? The Instagram account at Sussex Royal, beat out the Pope to break the Guinness World Record for the fastest accumulation of 1 million followers in 24 hours. In fact, within a day, they had 2.1 million. Chapter 12 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle took no chances when it came to protecting their family. At 7.30 p.m. on October 2, 2019, Harry filed a legal case against Mail on Sunday. The lawsuit was for the invasion of privacy, breach of data protection, and copyright infringement claims against Mail on Sunday for printing extracts from the private letter she wrote to her father in August 2018. He had also filed lawsuits at the same time against The Sun and The Mirror regarding their alleged illegal interception of his voicemail messages between 2001 and 2005. On October 20, 2019, British network ITV aired a documentary of the Sussex's Southern Africa travels where Harry and Meghan publicly admitted to their struggles with the press and tension between Harry and his brother William. 
Harry and Meghan decided that for the second half of November and December, they would base themselves in Canada. Their trip allowed them to go over the events that had unfolded since the wedding, and they discussed the possibilities of a better future. As hard as the decision was to make, they had come to a conclusion. Harry and Meghan were going to step back from their roles as senior royals. Making a living on their own to support their philanthropic endeavors was a daunting prospect. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle kept working on all previous commitments to avoid letting anybody down when they left the royal family. Harry and Meghan were used to big projects and big impact. Harry turned the first Invictus Games around in less than a year, and Meghan's projects had all broken records. Now they were ready to do even more of that at their own pace. Despite the change, they still wanted to carry out their duties for the Queen. That was the one thing that they did not want to end, not just because of Harry's love and respect for his grandmother, but to maximize her legacy in the UK and across the Commonwealth. Chapter 13 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle found freedom in their decisions and had the support of their loved ones in the process. On January 8, 2020, the couple took to Instagram to share their news with the world. Alongside their announcement, they launched their website, sussexroyal.com, which was now no longer a landing page for their new foundation, but a detailed roadmap of their new working model. The website offered clarity on their decision to be financially independent, which was not only to have more freedom in their work, but also to remove the tabloid's justification in having access to their lives. The Queen put out a statement showing support for Harry and Meghan's decision. The official communication also announced that they no longer wanted to rely on public money during the coming period of transition when they would live in both Canada and the UK. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle kept encountering reality checks, but were willing to surmount them together. Harry spent the next several days caught up in intense meetings and conference calls with top aides from all three royal households, Buckingham Palace, Clarence House, and Kensington Palace, which were led by Prince Charles's private secretary, Clive Alderton. Five days after the original meeting, the Queen issued a statement that a plan had emerged for a constructive and supportive way forward for Harry and his family to take effect in the spring of 2020. This was followed by a statement from Harry and Meghan. Both outlined the terms of the deal, which stipulated that the couple would completely step back from royal duties. No longer working members of the royal family, they would not be able to use their HRH titles or the word royal in any of their future endeavors. Harry would lose his military honors and his role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador was also pulled. Harry and Meghan were allowed to maintain their private patronages. Although they could no longer formally represent the Queen, they made clear that everything they do will continue to uphold the values of Her Majesty. As to money, Harry and Meghan would no longer receive public funds for royal duties. The couple took it even further, stating their wish to repay the sovereign grant expenditure for the refurbishment of Frogmore Cottage, which they wanted to remain as their UK family home. Privately, Prince Charles said he would help them financially out of his personal money if they needed it. That was him being a caring father, not the Prince of Wales. I recognize the challenges they have experienced as a result of intense scrutiny over the last two years and support their wish for a more independent life. Queen Elizabeth II as the novel coronavirus pandemic continued to escalate globally, Harry and Meghan, who had sent most of their belongings ahead of them, traveled privately to Los Angeles on March 14, 2020. They set up home in a large Mediterranean-style villa in a gated community popular with several high-profile entertainers and industry people. 
As they settled into their new life, the couple had time to reflect on where they had been and where they might go. Conclusion As a couple who hoped to change the world, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle planned to engage in projects that brought together their strengths to solve problems. Their idea was to set up the Sussex Royal Foundation, a near-carbon copy of the Royal Foundation, after they split from Kensington Palace in April 2019. By late November 2019, they started to wind up their work on the foundation, and by the beginning of 2020, they were already starting afresh with a non-profit organization that would drive them for years to come. The name of their nonprofit was one that had been in their minds since they got married, Archwell. Before Sussex Royal came the idea of Archi, the Greek word meaning source of action. We must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love, and when we do that, we will make this old world a new world. But love, love is the only way, Dr. Martin Luther King. Although they might not be working royals anymore, Harry and Meghan have not given up on their original principles and ideals. Harry is still interested in preserving the environment and supporting those with HIV, mental health issues, and veterans. For Meghan Markle, her focus remains on empowering women and girls all over the globe. The couple has been advised by leaders in all areas, including the Obamas, who have helped their team network and recommend new people for them to collaborate with. Above all, the couple wants to continue with what they have always set out to do, empowering others. On March 30, 2020, Buckingham Palace shared with the press the final details of the couple's future beyond their household transition. From April 1, 2020, Harry and Meghan would officially be independent. For a final message, they posted on their at Sussex Royal account for the last time. Though they had wanted to continue using the account, courtiers made it clear to them that it served as a royal record and they should start afresh. Conscious of the current global crisis, the couple announced that they would find the part they are to play in the current global shift and changing habits and are focusing on a new chapter to understand how they can best contribute. Try this. Make a list of all the things that you need to do to achieve your goals. Create an action plan for these tasks and share them with your friends for accountability.